Hello, this is Rodolfo Eric Angat, your teacher in Earth and Environmental Science. Today we'll be learning about the movement of tectonic plates. Our essential question for today is, how do I describe the different types of plate boundaries? This lesson covers standard 2.1. The competencies that we would like to attain in this instructional video are the following. I can define plate tectonics, tectonic plates, and plate boundaries. They all, they all sound the same, but they are different from each other. The second one, I can describe the different types of plate boundaries. We have convergent, divergent, and transform. The third one, I can explain why Earth is not growing despite the new crust created at the mid-ocean ridge. The mid-ocean ridge is found in the Atlantic Ocean and it is the one that is responsible why the Atlantic Ocean is getting wider. The fourth, I can explain why earthquakes are common around the Pacific Ocean. Around the Pacific Ocean, there are so many earthquakes and there are also so many volcanoes. This two, these two reasons are the reasons why they call the area the Pacific Ring of Fire. They actually made a movie out of it. It's a nice movie if you've seen it. It's about aliens and robots, big robots. Next one, I can explain how mountain ranges form. Just like in our case, if you drive to the west, you'll eventually reach the Appalachian Mountains. It's a mountain range. And of course, we have the, we have the Himalayas where we can find the tallest mountain which is Mount Everest. Lastly, I can explain how rocks are recycled in the subduction zone. So let's begin by defining plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is the theory, it is the science that explains that the outer shell of our planet is divided into several tectonic plates or lithospheric plates. And these tectonic plates or lithospheric plates glide over the mantle. So there are so many tectonic plates. The largest is the Pacific tectonic plate. So what's a tectonic plate? A tectonic plate is also known as a lithospheric plate. It is a massive irregularly shaped slab of solid rock, generally composed of both continental and oceanic. So these are the tectonic plates. If you boil an egg and then you drop it on the floor, you'll see that the shell of the egg breaks into different sizes, but still attached to the egg itself. This broken shell of the boiled egg are somewhat like the tectonic plates of Earth, but they're different because those shells, broken shells, they do not move, but the tectonic plates or lithospheric plates of Earth are continuously moving. And that's the reason why we have earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and different types of geological events. So again, the tectonic plates are this one. So we have the North American plate. We have the Pacific plate, which is the largest. South American plate, the Philippine plate, the Eurasian plate, Australian plate, and African plate. Now the Earth's lithosphere, which, which includes the crust and the upper mantle, is made up of a series of pieces of tectonic plates. So each tectonic plate is composed of this, the crust and the upper mantle. When you were in middle school, you learned about the layers of Earth. We have the solid inner core, the liquid outer core, the mantle, and the crust. The crust 
and the upper part of the mantle makes up the lithosphere, which is the one we consider as the lithospheric plate or the tectonic plate. And this lithospheric plate or tectonic plate is the one that floats on top of the asthenosphere, or generally we can also call it as the mantle. There are two types of Earth's crust. We have the continental and we have the oceanic crust. How do we compare the two types of Earth's crust? Let's begin by finding their similarities. So how is the oceanic crust similar to the continental crust? By the way, the oceanic crust is the one found at the base of the ocean, while the, con while the continental crust is the land, the continents. So how are, the, how are these two types of crust similar? They are similar because they're both crust, they're both made up of rocks, they're both solid, they make up the tectonic plates, they are part of the lithosphere, and they are both moving. So that is how these two types of crust are the same. Now let's see how they are different from each other. Let's begin with the oceanic crust. The oceanic crust is more dense. But even though that it is more dense or heavier, it's thinner. It's only 5 to 10 kilometers or 3 to 6 miles in thickness. Compared to the continental crust that is 30 to 50 kilometers or 20 to 30 miles in thickness. The oceanic crust is made up of basalt and it is younger because it's always replaced and we'll be learning more about why this is younger as we proceed. The continental crust is less dense. It's made up of granite rock and it is 30 to 50 kilometers in thickness way thicker than the oceanic crust and it is older because it is seldomly being recycled. So this is how you compare the oceanic crust and the continental crust. Remember the oceanic crust is found at the base of the ocean while the continental crust is the one that makes up the land. Let's continue. Now, how about plate boundaries? What are plate boundaries? Plate boundaries are found at the edge of the lithospheric plates and, are, and there are three types of them. Now, you will see in our previous lesson right here that there are different types of tectonic plates or lithospheric plates. And these plates are continuously moving because they are floating on top of the mantle. And the mantle is a very, very hot molten rock and the convection current happening in there is causing the tectonic plates just to continue moving and moving in different directions. Now where is the plate boundary here? See these lines here? We, these are the plate boundaries. The place where two tectonic plates meet is called the plate boundary. Where the one de Puka plate and the North American plate meet is a plate boundary and it's a plate boundary that makes up the San Andreas fault. Okay, now where the South American plate and the Nazca plate meet is also a plate boundary and this is a part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. So this plate here interacting with this plate here makes up this plate boundary here. Now, what are the different types of plate boundaries? The three types of plate boundaries are, or look at this one before we see that screen again. See how the plates are moving in different directions? So this is where they meet. This, these are what we call the plate boundaries. 
And there are three types of plate boundaries. We have the transform. They slide past each other. Look at the arrows. We have the divergent. They move away from each other. And we have the convergent. They move towards each other. I need you to remember the type of movement that is exhibited by the three types of plate boundaries. Transform, divergent, and convergent. Other names that may be used for transform could be strike, strike slip, like the San Andreas Fault, divergent, or the spreading center, just like in the Atlantic Ocean, and convergent, also known as subduction zone. Please do remember this. When you hear a strike slip, that is a result of the plate boundary called transform. When you hear spreading center, that is the result of the plate boundary called divergent. When you hear subduction zone, that is the result of the plate boundary known as convergent. Now let's begin with the divergent boundary. With the divergent boundary, two plates are moving away from each other, just like what is happening in Africa. So what's happening in Africa right now is that East and West Africa is breaking apart because the plates that make up that part of Africa are moving in two separate directions, causing the formation of the Red Sea. Eventually, that sea will become so big and Africa will be divided into two, West and East Africa. And this is the result of the divergent boundary. And, and this is what will happen in the future. This is the eastern, eastern side, and this is the western side of Africa. Right now, it's right, right here. Okay? Let's continue. Another word that you have to remember that is associated with divergent boundary is Ridspus. The rising magma from the mantle is pushing the two plates away from each other, and that process is what we call as Ritzpus. Again, Ritzpus is associated with divergent boundary. Seafloor spreading is another example of a divergent boundary, and it is happening in the Atlantic Ocean. The seafloor spreading was discovered by Harry Hess. Seafloor spreading starts at the mid-ocean ridges, this part here. This here is the mid-ocean ridges, the middle. At the mid-ocean ridges, new rocks are formed. They are igneous rocks. So the youngest rocks are closest to the mid-ocean ridges right here because these are newly formed rocks. The farther you go away from the mid-ocean ridges, the older the rock is. Please remember that. The youngest rocks on earth are found along the mid-ocean ridges, and all the rocks are farther away from the mid-ocean ridges. Rocks, rocks farther away from the mid-ocean ridges are older. Sea floor spreading is making the Atlantic Ocean wider, but earth is not growing. How can that be? If the Atlantic Ocean is getting wider and more and more magma is being added to the Atlantic Ocean, how come Earth is not getting any bigger? We we'll learn that as we proceed. Again, ridge push associated with divergent boundary. The rising magma from the mantle is responsible for the ridge push pushing this ridge away to the left and then this one to the right. Sea floor spreading is making the Atlantic Ocean wider, but Earth is not growing. This is another animation for, for uh, the sea floor spreading along the Atlantic Ocean. As you can see, more magma rises, and the plates are moving away from each other as new rocks push 
both sides in opposite directions. Across the Atlantic Ocean is the longest underwater mountain range due to the mid-ocean range. The mid-ocean range is also the reason why the Atlantic Ocean is getting wider. That's the mid-ocean range. Remember, I've been showing you the words ridge push and it's associated with divergent boundary. Now let's go with the convergent boundary. With this lesson, we'll be able to answer the question, why is Earth not growing despite that the Atlantic Ocean is getting wider? So convergent boundary is when two plates come towards each other or collide with one another. In the subduction zones, the old oceanic crust sinks into the mantle and melted or recycled. You must be asking, this is the continental crust because it's mountain and it's land. This is the oceanic crust. It's underwater. But why is the oceanic crust the one that is subducting or the one that is sinking into the mantle? If you remember earlier, when we compare the continental crust and the oceanic crust, we said that the oceanic crust is more dense. It's heavier. While the continental crust is lighter or it's less dense. So when the two collides, what actually happens is that the heavier oceanic crust, since it's heavier, it sinks into the mantle and we call that sinking into the mantle as subduction. And the mantle is a place that is really, really very hot. And what happens to the rocks in the oceanic crust is that it, the rocks melt and are recycled into new rocks. This is the reason why Earth is not growing. Because whatever is added in the Atlantic Ocean through the mid-ocean ridge is being removed from the Pacific Ocean subduction. So the Atlantic Ocean is getting wider while the Pacific Ocean is getting narrower because part of it is being pushed downward in the subduction zone and it's being melted and recycled into new rocks. And these new rocks, they usually come out from volcanoes and from the mid-ocean ridges too. On most convergent boundaries, subduction happens that melt or recycle old oceanic crust. There are three types of convergent boundaries. We have the oceanic continental, we have the oceanic oceanic, we have the continental continental. Remember, oceanic is the denser one, it's heavier, while the continental is the lighter one. And that's why in this one, the oceanic is the one that subducts. Subduction is also known as the sinking of the oceanic plate. Let's continue. Convergent boundary. Oceanic plate collides with continental plate. In areas where the oceanic plate collides with the continental plate, volcanoes form just like around the Pacific Ocean known as the Pacific Ring of Fire. What's happening is that the subduction of the oceanic plate recycles the old crust and this in this area trenches are formed again this is another word trenches trenches are associated with convergent boundary and then adjacent to those trenches the is the formation of the continental volcanic arc so this arc of volcanoes so the subducting oceanic crust rises up and form the volcanoes. So when this oceanic crust melt in the mantle, their density become lower because they're very hot. What happens is that the molten rock rises up to the surface and form volcanoes, just like the one in the picture. Okay. 
Subduction of oceanic plate, old crust is melted and recycled, deeper trenches are formed, island volcanic arc are formed, and this is happening when two oceanic plates collide with one another. So if you'll compare it with this one, this is oceanic and continental plate colliding with one another. There is, there is the trench, there is the continental volcanic arc, there are a lot of earthquakes. While in this one, we have the oceanic and another oceanic colliding with one another. The trenches are deeper and there are island volcanic arc that form and there are also a lot of earthquakes. Okay? Now, in this area, this is what we call the Aleutian Island close to Alaska and Russia. Uh, I was like laughing when, when this person told, uh, said in national TV that Alaska is next to California. It is not, okay? It's like way higher than that, way higher in, way higher in latitude. So it's adjacent to Russia. Now, these Aleutian Islands here, they're actually volcanic art. Okay? So that means if these are volcanic arcs, they were formed because of an oceanic, oceanic convergent boundary. So this is a boundary, this is a tectonic plate, another tectonic plate, and they are colliding. And because of that, this island volcanic arc was formed. Now, how about a convergent boundary that is continental, continental? They're both continent. So remember, they have almost the same density. Neither is heavier. So what happens with this one is that the plates pushes each other upward, forming mountain ranges, just like the one in the Himalayas. Earthquakes also happen in these areas, but there is no subduction, okay? Now, in subduction zones, we have what we call as the Benioff zone. Remember, the subduction zone is where the oceanic crust sinks into the mantle because it's heavier. Because of the friction that is happening as the oceanic crust sinks, what happens is many areas build up pressure and stress that results to the origin of shallow focus earthquakes. This area where stress happens along the subduction zone is called as the Benioff zone. Let's see it here. Shallow focus earthquakes are produced in response to the bending and fracturing of the lithosphere as it begins its descent into the mantle. With increasing depths, earthquake epicenters occur in the interior of the descending slab. As the Oceanic crust sinks, stress builds up in this area, and this area is what we call as the Benioff zone. And this is the reason why there is a lot of earthquakes around the Pacific Ocean, because of the subduction happening around it. Let's continue. Friction and stress builds up, happen in the Benioff zone along the subduction zone. Last type of a uh, uh, plate boundary is the San Andreas Fault. This should be capital S, okay? The San Andreas Fault is a transform fault. The North American Fault is moving in this direction, downwards, sideways, and the Pacific Plate is moving upward, sideways. Now, the friction and stress that builds up in this area because of the movement of these two plates is causing the stress that eventually can lead to an earthquake. This is the area which we know as the San Andreas Fault. Let's see the, see the movement. The red lines, the red jagged lines, represent the earthquakes. Let's continue. The San Andreas Fault is a transform fault. Now, how about tsunami? How do they happen? 
underwater earthquakes can cause the formation of tsunami. Like this one here is an earthquake. And then this, the movement causes the formation of seismic waves that results to the sea level to rise up and then the giant wave called the tsunami. Okay, hopefully this video instruction provided you with the knowledge to be able to get a good score in our MC assessment. Thank you so much again. See you guys.